So what we have here is a standard master combination padlock. Um, in order to open this up, we had to take a buzz saw and make slices all around the, um, the back of the outer case, around where you see the purple. Um, once we made all the slices all the way around, we were able to peel back the metal, um, which just allowed the back cover to come right off. So once we did that, this is what we were left with. You can kind of see the slices we made all around it. Um, the back cover came right off as shown, and we were left, um, and which exposed the back plate. Um, so basically, all the parts of the lock, um, it's not as complicated as it may seem. It consists of these five basic parts. Um, in order to construct it, put it back together, first we have to take the shackle, um, and it fit it through the two holes of the outer case, obviously, like this. Um, we then have the lever, which is the main, um, which is kind of like the centerpiece of the lock. Um, as you can see here, we have a bar extruding from the middle of the lock, and this bar basically allows the lever to kind of pivot around it and spin, as shown. Um, it also kind of acts as a placeholder. It holds all the mechanisms of the lock on the inside together. Um, so that's what that does. We see, if you take a closer look at the lever, you see um, this black plastic piece, which is called the locking latch. Um, when placed correctly, the locking latch should place right into that, um, into that little groove of the shackle, which kind of... Um, turns them both as one. Sorry if I can get this on. There we go. Um, so basically what holds the lock closed is when you try opening the lock, you can see that the um, lever pivots around the bar and the back of the lever is hitting against this wheel, which is attached to the combination dial in front. Um, it's hitting against the wheel, not only that wheel, but if you can imagine, um, there are two other wheels attached to the back plate. Um, three wheels in total, one for each number um, in the combination of the lock. Um, these wheels are placed directly on top of this wheel so that we have three wheels all on top of each other. So basically when you try to open the shackle, the back of the lever is hitting against all three wheels, um, not allowing it to open. Um, once we, as you can see, um, this one has a kind of like a space in it, a notch in the wheel, as do these two wheels. There's that one right there, and there's another one on the third one. Once all three notches are aligned with the back of the lever, the lever is, base is able to slide right into the spaces and freeze the shackle. Next we have the, um, this simple piece here is just called the shackle collar. All it does is fits around the shackle like that and it holds it in place. When the back, um, when the back plate is placed on top, as shown, a tiny little piece of the shackle collar fits right into this slot and um, prevents the shackle from moving freely. It uh, limits it to this small um, space, so it can only slide up and down that much. That's basically the main workings of the lock. The, um, in order to spin the three wheels and align the notches, um, what we have is a simple um, notch system. Each of these three wheels has a raised piece of metal, as you can see there. Here's that one. Um, this one has one right there, and kind of on the inside, they have two on the inside facing each other. We have a series of notches hitting against each other. Basically, when you try, um, you start spinning the, um, in order to do the combination, you have to start spinning the combination dial clockwise, which is basically um, spinning the wheel. The notch is turning clockwise until the notch on the first wheel um, eventually hits against the notch on the middle wheel. It starts spinning both of them together until the notch of the second wheel hits the notch of the third wheel, um, which in um, turn makes all three wheels start spinning in unison. 
um, what you're actually doing when you start doing the combination, you're aligning the back wheel first. You start spinning them until all three are in unison, um, until finally the space, the groove in the third wheel is aligned with the back of the lever. You then switch directions, which in turn um, uh, allows the first notch on the first wheel attached to the combination dial start spinning the other way, starts moving freely, it's not hitting anything. Um, that's why you have to go around twice. The first time you go around, you're basically um, you're positioning the notch to hit against the notch of the second wheel on the other side. Um, once it's on the other side, you're pushing, you start spinning that wheel the other way. Um, so you pass the number the first time, hit it the second time, which, uh, which aligns the space of the second wheel. And finally, you switch directions again, same concept. Um, this one's moving freely. The third number, you're just aligning the first wheel, actually, the one that's um, aligned in the front. Um, so when all that works together, the combination of this particular lock is 15365. So as we can see, I will uh, do that in. Um, we have 15, skip 36 once, 36, and 5. This frees the shackle, and if I'm very careful not to move anything, I'm going to turn this around, take this off, get this out of the way, and we can basically see that the notch of this wheel is aligned right where the back of the lever would be spinning in, as well as these two notches, um, which kind of came out of line when it opened as an automatic locking system, which spins it um, right as you open it. But basically, these two notches um, were aligned up perfectly right behind that one, allowing the lever to spin into the spaces. And that's basically how it works.